do one through 13 because it's divided into two segments. So we're going to do one through 13, so we won't be here all night. And next week we'll pick up with 14 through 23. So Isaiah chapter 2, uh, verses 1 through 13. So we'll open up with a prayer. And then we'll get started. Lord God, thank you for allowing us to come to this point of this day. Thank you for bringing us to Bible study this evening to study your word. We pray, Lord, for wisdom and understanding as we go deeper into this book of Isaiah. Hosea. Hosea. We pray that our hearts and minds are open and receiving to what you have to say to us through the book of Hosea. We pray for those who are in attendance this evening. We pray for their health, their wealth, and their well-being. We pray for those who are not in attendance this evening. We pray, Lord, that you will open their minds so that they will want to get to know you better. We pray, Lord, that you will open their hearts so that they will love you enough to want to know you better. We pray that you will lead and guide them to this place so that this room is filled to overflowing and our numbers increase as the numbers increase in Jerusalem next to In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 So, we will get started. She will read verses 1 through 13. And she's just going to read all of them, so we're just going to go through the text. So, verses 1 through 13. Hosea chapter 2. Calm your brothers, my people, and your sisters, compassion. Rebuke your mother, rebuke her, for she is not my wife, and I am not her husband. Let her remove the promiscuous look from her face and her adultery from between her breasts. Otherwise, I will strip her naked and expose her as she was on the day of her birth. I will make her like a desert and like a parched land, and I will let her die of thirst. I will have no compassion on her children because they are the children of promiscuity. For their mother is promiscuous. She conceived them and acted shamefully. For she thought, I will go after my lovers, the men who give me my food and water, my wool and flax, my oil and drink. Therefore, this is what I will do. I will block her way with thorns. I will enclose her with a wall so that she cannot find her paths. She will pursue her lovers but not catch them. She will seek them but not find them. Then she will think, I will go back to my former husband. Then, for then it was better for me than now. She does not recognize that it is I who gave her the grain, the new wine, and the oil. I lavished silver and gold on her, which they used for bail. Therefore, I will take back my grain in its time and my new wine in its season. I will take away my wool and linen, which were to cover her nakedness. Now I will expose her shame in the sight of her lovers, and no one will rescue her from my hands. I will put an end to all her celebrations, her feasts, new moons, and Sabbaths, all her festivals. I will devastate her vines and fig trees. She thinks that these are her wages that her lovers have given her. I will turn them into a thicket, and the wild animals will eat them and I will punish her for the days of the bells when she burned incense to them, put on her rings and jewelry, and went after her lovers, but forgot me. This is the Lord's declaration. Amen. So, the addressees, the addressees of Hosea chapter 2, verse 1, are not identified. It says, if you look at it again, notice the sentence again. It says, say to your brothers, Omni, and to your sisters, Ohama. So remember, these are the names that God told Hosea to name his children by his wife, Gomer, the prostitute. Last week, we saw that Lo Ami means, or Lo Ami means not my people, and Lo Rahama means, or meant no mercy. Verse number one says, Ami and Rahama. 
You notice he left off the low. It says, Ami and Muhammad. Now we have the reversal. Remember, last week we discussed the reversals. So now we have the reversals of the names and their meanings. Ami in this verse means my people. Last week, lo Ami means not my people. This week, Ami means my people. And Rohama means, in this verse, means mercy. Lo Hama, no, lo Rohama means no mercy. But now in this week, we see the reversals that we talked about last week. So, Rahama in this verse means mercy. God intends to save. And these voices crying out mercy is affirmation that God intends to overcome his people's failures. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, the rest of chapter 2 is comprised of two sessions. Verses 2 through 13 portrays Hosea's family in promiscuous infidelity. Now the second session, verses 14 through 23, portray the promised future restoration of Israel. So those are the two different sessions. And remember, Gomer and her children represent Israel, and Hosea represented God. But now we have other people that are going to come into play. Gomer's lovers. So Gomer's lovers represent the Baals, who had seduced Israel and prevailed upon the people to leave God. So her lovers are going to be those false gods, the Baals, the Ast uh, Baals and the Asherah. So, and they're going to be trying to get the people to, of course, leave God and to worship them. The land of Israel is personified, and it represents the animals and vegetation. The heavens play a role by responding to God in the land. What this does is include the universe. What this does by including all that, it includes the universe that God created into this entire equation. So verses 2 through 13 contain the indictment of a faithless Gomer, and remember, Gomer represents Israel, by an anguish and anguish Hosea, who represents God, using the children to address their mother with his words. And that's what she just read in verse number two. Uh, he describes her past, in fact, it's all the way through two through 13. He describes her past and her continuing infidelities and her inability to understand the seriousness of her situation. Judgment will come upon her for her adultery with her lovers, which were the Canaanite gods. So here, what the children uh, do in contending with their mother was to charge her, it's just like in the courtroom setting, they charged her with a breach of family integrity or infidelity to her husband, who is their father. Why the children? Why the children were used is actually kind of unsure, but her condemnation would adversely affect them, just as her restoration would affect their own restoration. So the phrase "for she is not my wife and I am not her husband" puts the status of the marital bond into play. Gomer's poetry has severed the marital bond. But it is unclear whether it also indicated a divorce in legal terms. Because what she did, you know, he could have gotten a divorce from her. But the word does not specifically tell her that he went and he divorced her. The declarations in two, chapter, uh, Hosea 2, uh, chapter 2, verse 2, is like those in the divorce documents from the ancient Near East which either state that a man and woman are no longer married, or it represents the status of divorce and the reason for it. So based on what followed chapter 2, verse 2, it seemed that for a time, Hosea still hoped that Gomer could be convinced of the errors of her ways. So he named the children Lo Rama, No Mercy, and Lo Omni, Not My People, 
to indicate that Israel had broken the covenant with God. Although during the same time he continued to live with Gomer, just as Israel remained in his land and with the king for some years as it continued in its abandonment of covenant responsibilities. Yeah, I, I'm actually, but wasn't it the law that if she did uh, adultery that he could have had her stoned? Yeah, they did. Oh, okay. But he didn't do that. Uh, and that means stoned to death. Right. Well, how does that represent as far as God and Israel? How is God could have killed Israel as yeah, well? Yeah, he could have had, but he didn't. Okay. That's the whole thing. He could have had, but he didn't. He showed them mercy. And that's why this daughter was named No Mercy. And then now it's reversed to where it's saying mercy. Because and remember, uh, the omni meant not low omni meant not my people, but now it's reversed to mean my people. So yeah, good question. What it is is God is now the God is not going to more or less stone them to death or kill them because He do recognize them as being His people and He's showing them mercy. So yeah, great question. So yeah. That, that is what that represented, though, because he could have had her stoned. On his say-so, they could have stoned her, or he could have, you know, went on and divorced her. So, Were if the... his children? Hmm? Were they his children? Yeah. Remember last week, we said they were his children. Right. They were his children. There's nowhere in the Bible that indicated that they were not his children. And they were named the children because God told him to name them these specific things for this specific reason. But there's nowhere that said that they were not his children. The only thing it said was it represented uh, one of the kids as being what Jez Jezreel, I think, as being his child. That's the only one that said that this was his child. The other one just said these children. But then we deducted that. He, God named them these names for this particular reason because there's nowhere in the Bible that says they were not his. Yeah. But it did indicate that we do know that the first one was definitely his. But they have deducted that the other ones were his, but it's just not specified. Yeah. It sounds like he was punishing them or something. Hmm? Was he punishing them? He's, well, Ishka, remember, this is just a representation of Israel. So it's not just this particular family that God is punishing because he really didn't have anything against this family. His thing was against the whole people of Israel. So they were just representation. He was just using them as a representation. And that's all. They were just representing Israel because he's trying to get to Israel, uh, get to the hearts of Israel. So now if there was no divorce, Gomer's infidelity resulted in one or more separation from Hosea. Remember, she kept leaving him. She kept leaving him and coming back, leaving him and coming back, leaving him and coming back, you know, with all her adulteries that she was committing. So she kept leaving him, but she also kept coming back. That's why they didn't think that a divorce took place, because she kept coming back. He kept allowing her to come back. And all that just represents how Israel would leave God and come back. Leave God and come back. And that's the thing that you have to remember that this is just a representation of the people in Israel and God. What <laughs> the people who are Israel and God. So the goal of the children's contention is that Gomer put away signs of her infidelity. Both harlotry and adultery describe her activities which are symbolized with her countenance, or in some of your Bibles said, or her face, uh, where uh, verse two says that she put away her prostitution from her face. So that's, that's like her countenance. So this was symbolized by that in between her breasts. Putting things away suggests her putting away the jewelry, the clothing, the perfume, or other inappropriate, tangible things. In verse number three, the judgments of stripping making her like the wilderness of parched land, because remember this is Israel, and killing her with thirst are the negative reinforcements of the children's contention with her. They are to act harshly with their mother by first stating her dire situation, as verse number two states, she is no longer Hosea's wife, in the hope that she will put away her various infidelities. And remember, this is still symbolic. 
This is still about, you, you, I mean, you, you see the children, you see the mother, but you got to remember that they represent. You see Hosea, you got to remember Hosea represents God. You see uh, uh, Gomer, you got to remember she represents Israel. So this is actually God talking to Israel, his children. So his children are Lo-Rahama, yeah, Rohama and Lo-Amini, but in this chapter, He's, he's calling them his people, so that's Ami, and he's calling, he's having mercy on them, so that's uh, Rahama. So now verse 3 introduces the consequences of Gomer's not responding positively to the contention of the children. So she's not going to listen to the children. She's not going to listen to them. The last phrase, kill her with thirst, is the final step of the judgment process. Without mitigation, Nakedness and dehydration in an arid wilderness would lead to death. So these acts in verse 3 are threats that would happen if Gomer continued to fail to listen to her children. And verse 3 says, Or I will strip her naked and expose her as the day she was born and make her like a wilderness and turn her into a parched land and kill her with thirst. The first act, stripping, as a judgment could be literally carried out by, now this is what, you know more or less what your question was, uh, or relates to, uh, stripping as a, it's a judgment that could be literally carried out, literally carried out by the husband, or the elders or judges in a community, forcing the disgraced wife to leave behind the clothing provided to her by her husband, therefore shaming her. That's part of, you know, like you just asked about the stone. The man did have, he could, he could have divorced her, he could have had her, because he provided everything for her once he met, got married to her. So he provided her clothing. So one of the things that he would do is continue to take care of her by pro uh, providing her clothing, or he could have just stopped. And she would have had to give him, give him everything back, which we'll see later. Exodus 21 and 10 reads, if he takes another wife to himself, he shall not diminish the food, clothing, or marital rights of the first wife. Mm -hmm. So he was, he was going to have to, you know, continue to take, this was just a man's way of, of taking care of that woman. You know, he was going to continue to take care of her unless he had, you know, the, uh, what, I guess the proof or he had a legitimate reason to divorce her. In this case, he would have had. But since this is all, you know, God just using Israel or using this family as symbolic, you know, he would have had the reasons like what Mr. Uh, Rogan was asking. He would have had, but he chose not to. He chose to continue to take care of her and to do all this because this is God telling him. Remember, he was telling Hosea to do these things. Stripping was a judgment on an adulteress that was sanctioned, sanctioned by the community once guilt is proven or even used sometimes as part of the divorce ceremony. So had he stripped her of all her clothes, and that meant literally stripping her in public. So everybody could see that would be his way of saying, you know, I'm through with her, I'm not gonna take care of her anymore, and I'm gonna divorce her. So, and, but he chose, you know, of course, to continue to take care of her, because remember, God is, I'm gonna keep taking care of Israel, no matter what they do. So that's what this is, symbolic. In moving this from Gomer to the land of Israel, so this is, we're going from, and that's why I'm saying you have to keep the land of Israel in your mind as you're thinking Gomer, because this is what this is about. There, she's, she's used as a symbol. So a symbol, is just like when we were going through Isaiah, most every, everywhere we were coming, I always thought of symbolism throughout the whole thing, this is what this is. Instead of thinking of, uh, you know, like the family per se, how this stuff really, really, really is happening to this family, and da, da, da. You have to think this is God talking, you know, about Israel to, you know, and Hosea is being represented as God, and she's represented as Israel. So instead of the fruitfulness that resulted from God sowing to the land of Israel would be like the wilderness, the fires, or the desert, none of which are sown. So it would be like more or less like a dry, parched land. Ezekiel also involved the symbolism of God's marriage to Jerusalem and Samaria, using stripping resulting in nakedness. And you can see that in Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 1 through 59. 
and also Ezekiel chapter 23, verses 1 through 49. So that's Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 1 through 59, and chapter 23, verses 1 through 49, it talks about, you know, Ezekiel used it as a symbolism of God's marriage to Jerusalem and then to Samaria and stripping them naked or more or less exposing them to uh, what I want to say barrenness, man of barrenness like that because of things that they were doing. In the harsh judgment against Jerusalem for adultery and bloodshed, she will be given into the hands of those who would mistreat her. And that's, and that's in Ezekiel. So Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 38 and 39, which is part of that 1 through 59 that I just gave you, but Ezekiel chapter 16, verses 38 and 39 reads, I will judge you as women who commit adultery and shed blood are judged and bring blood upon you in wrath and jealousy. I will deliver you into their hands and they shall throw down your platform and break down your lofty places. They shall strip you of your clothes and take your beautiful objects and leave you naked and bare. And this was God talking to, what well, through Ezekiel, talking to Jerusalem. So the same thing here with Hosea and Israel. These were the Babylonians or others who wreaked havoc on Jerusalem. Remember Assyria, Babylonian, and all them uh, were wreaking havoc, even Egypt at that time. Their assault is symbolized in the act of stripping Jerusalem naked and taking her jewelry, which is what Hosea is saying about uh, Gomer in Israel. Stripping people naked or otherwise is a charge against unscrupulous people. Job chapter 22 verse 6 says, For you have exacted pledges from your family for no reason and stripped the naked of their clothing. So therefore, the stripping of Gomer was likely a metaphor for the humiliating punishment that Israel would suffer in the historical process instead of Gomer literally being forced naked from her home. So that's why that is. This is just for you to visualize. So you can be able to visualize. So he gave you, he gave Israel a simple example by using this family. So all of this is just for us to, to I mean, he didn't literally do this to uh, Gomer. That's why, you know, the children were Hosea. Because Hosea loved his family. He loved his family. We'll see that as we go on. He loved all his kids. He loved his wife. He really did. So uh, throughout the story of Hosea's family, his wife and his children, we must remember that they represent and they are symbolic of the nation of Israel. And you know, it's easy to think about that because like I said, you keep thinking about how Israel was doing God. They forgot about him, they, they just worshiped those Baal. They, um, you know, they would, <laughs> they would be obedient for a couple of years, then they go over here, they'd be disobedient, then they'd be obedient, then they disobedient, they were going just back and forth, back and forth and all that. So God has used a lot of different means and a lot of different ways of trying to get to these people, and this was one way of doing it. By Let me put this right in the middle of you all. I'm going to use this family right, right in the middle of you all. So it's, it's symbolic. Even though in verse number five, we will see that it returns to Gomer, we must remember the fact that this family represented God and Israel. Verse number four simply reminds us that the children are children of harlotry or prostitution, and that the daughter's name meant no mercy, representing that Israel would be shown no mercy because of their faithlessness. As the mother, Gomer may also represent Samaria, since in Isaiah chapter 51, verse 18, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 1, and then verse 13, and then in Isaiah chapter 66, verse number 7, capital cities are recognized as the mother of the people. So Gomer probably represents Samaria, the capital of Israel. And, and she is the mother. So she's the mother of the children, like she's the mother of the people, because the children and, and, and her represented the people, or the children with, along with her represent the people. Gomer, as representative, had acted shamefully, 
and involving her children in her activity. Remember verse number four referred to them as children of prostitution. It reads, upon her children also, I will have no pity because they are children of prostitution. So, uh, on two occasions, verse number five and verse number seven, um, in Hosea chapter two, verses, between verses two through 13, so in verses five and verse seven, it appears that Gomer is speaking. I said it appears that Gomer is speaking. But what you must remember is that Hosea is actually speaking and giving us what he thought Gomer would say. So like in verse number five, it reads, for their mother. It starts out saying, for their mother, and for she said. And you, you know, that's what that verse starts out for his for their mother, and then for she said. And then look at verse number seven, it reads, then she shall say. So it's like, Gom I mean, yeah, uh, Hosea is actually speaking for Gomer. So we, now we have no way of knowing Gomer or the children's points of view. Because Hosea is doing all this talk. Hosea is talking. What we see here is that she intends to go after her lovers. That was her intent, to go after her lovers. In verse number five, Gomer's lovers are mentioned. They are also mentioned by the term lovers. It's using the word lover. In verse number five, it mentioned the word lovers. And it's also used by that term in verse number seven, in verse number 10, in verse number 12, and in verse number 13. They are the Canaanite gods mentioned in verse number 13, whom Gomer falsely attributes to giving her the things listed in verses 5, 8, and 12. She mentioned all these things that were given to her in verses 5, 8, and 12. But in verse number 13, if you look at 13, she says, um, well, not number 13, yeah, they had to mention it. Yeah, they, they were mentioned in verse number 13. But Gomer thinks that they gave her all those things listed in verses 5, 8, and 12. Then if you look at verse 5, she says, I will go after my lovers. They give me my bread and my water, my wood and my flax. She attributed them to giving her things. In verse number 8, she says, uh, who lavished her upon her silver and gold that they used for bells. She used them for the bells. And then in verse number 12, she said, these are my pay which my lovers have given me. So she's thinking that they gave them to her. She thinks that her lovers had given her all the stuff she had. The things were, but, 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 well, she thinks that the bells, not the lovers, she thinks that the bells had given to her, those false gods, these idols. She's attributing those things to them. She's attributing all this stuff that the bells, she said that the bells had uh, given them to her. But they were actual things that were given to her by the lovers. She exchanged, uh, in exchange for her sexual favors because she was a prostitute. So all these things she was attributing to, but she was attributing to the lovers who are actually the Canaanite gods. But she was saying that Baal had, given, had blessed her with all this stuff. Not God, but Baal. The Baal had blessed her with this stuff. But all they were were things that these men had given to her for sleeping with them, for having sex with them. But now is when I need you to remember Gomer's role as representing Israel. The lovers are those who gave her life-sustaining commodities. These things are those things that a cultivated land blessed by God can produce for its inhabitants. In verse number five, the listed commodities are bread, you got water, wool, flax, and oil. And then in verse number eight, they are grain, wine, oil, silver, and gold. In verse number nine, grain, wine, wool, and silver. And then in verse number 22, they have grain, wine, and oil. Well, Goma thought of as the payoff for her affections, these commodities were actually gifts from her husband. 
which we see Hosea say in verse number eight. So all this stuff she was getting, that she was thinking were coming from, you know, all these lovers, the Baals or the gods, because she called Baals a god. They were actually gifts from Hosea. Because remember what we said earlier, Hosea kept taking care of her. He loved her just that much, even though she was doing all this stuff. Hosea continued to take care of her. So in verse number eight, you, like I said, Hosea is talking. And it starts out saying, she did not know that it was I who gave her the grain, the wine, and the oil, and who lavished upon her silver and gold that they used for Baal. So with the silver and gold, she was giving it to the Baal. She was, they were using it to make, continue making idols, because you know they made their idols. So she was using all that stuff where they, you know, melt it down and put it on the bell. So that's what she was doing. But Hosea saying she did not know that it was I who gave her. So that remember Hosea's talk. So she just didn't know it. She's just thinking she was contributing all this to those false gods. And he was actually giving it to her. So she was thinking that they were doing it, but it wasn't. Um, yeah, Hosea was giving her everything. Verse number six is describing the negative consequences of Gomer's following after her lovers. It is also symbolic of God's frustration of Israel's attempts to secure itself through the worship of other gods and even foreign alliances. Now the visual aspect is probably limit, limitations placed on Israel, or it could be when uh, Shemassanester of Assyria, who was the king of Assyria, came up against Samaria. You can read about that over in 2 Kings chapter 17, verse number 3, where it actually tells you that that king came up against, uh, yeah, they were, he was the king of Israel, I mean of Assyria, he came up against, he came up against uh, Israel, and at that time, Hosea was living in Israel. Gomer's pursuit of her lovers did not bring her the success that she desired. Therefore, she considered going back to her husband, Jose, because after all, she needed security. So, in a, and looking at this from Israel, from the Israel aspect, because we have 